I'm Emma Camacho. I am a qualified nurse practitioner and I look after patients um, privately and in the NHS. My name is uh, Kizito Kamasho. I'm an intensive care nurse. At the moment, I'm off sick because of my diagnosis. Official diagnosis, grade three invasive ductal carcinoma, meaning that it's a primary breast cancer, which is invasive, which has moved from the original position which is a breast and moved into my lymph nodes and moved into my lungs and moved into my bones. So it's metastasized. I found out, um, we were at home and just sitting on the sofa, it was a Sunday, we were just messing about and we were watching TV, we were laughing at some programme that was on, I can't remember what it was. And Kizzy was sitting beside me and I just tipped him like that, just by accident. And my hand touched off of his right breast. And I felt something hard. And I thought, oh my God, what is that? And Kiz just said to me, what do you mean? And I said, there's something is hard there. And I just checked his breast and I found a hard lump underneath his nipple. And because I operate on um, the skin, that's my profession. I knew it wasn't anything like I had removed before, like a lipoma or a cyst. And it was a different texture, it was a different feel. Um, so yeah, we had no idea that it was cancer initially. We were hoping that it wasn't, but the events unfolded that he, you know, he had his biopsy and um, he had a tumour. Um, the minute you get a diagnosis like that, everything changes because nothing is the same. Because yeah, now you have uh, your different outlook of, you have a completely different outlook on life. You know, you. you don't look at things the same way and you know so to be honest I mean I don't think nothing has stayed the same everything has changed I think sometimes you feel like you like you feel a bit lonely Although, you know, you have your friends and your family. And the doctors and the oncologists, they've all been amazing, but you sometimes you feel like you're going through this journey on your own. Or together, you know, it's like, the receptor that's driving this is her too. And you, you do wonder, you know, why it's happened. Why didn't I notice it earlier? Emotionally, um, at the beginning, it hit like a ton of bricks, you know, it kind of, you know, wow. But still dealing with it. The, Practical aspects have been more sort of more easier to deal with um, because you know I go and have my appointment, get my bloods done, get the you know the chemotherapy done and things like that. Um, I kind of know what to expect, when to expect. I have my dates and you know I know how it's sort of I know how to keep myself well enough so that I'm able to continue with my therapy. So on that practical side of things, it's easier to deal with. Initially, I didn't want to tell anyone, not because it was shameful, but I just needed time to get my head around it. I'm not an open book, I'm not an open person. I'm Is it a taboo subject? Should we be talking about it? Should we not talk about it? The most difficult part was trying to open up to other people, trying to get 
it's more or less you are inviting people into your private space and you know getting them to know your intricate details and things like that um, and things like this you know it's it challenges you in a way that you have to you have to open up because it's the kind of thing that you have to do you know if you are to um, uh, to, to live in a you know in a society with people and with the people you you are close to so they understand you know more or less what's happening to you the wife has been sort of very supportive and because um, she knows what I'm talking about she's in the medical field which I am in as well so we all know exactly what we are talking about <laughs> it's I'm always, still the boss. <laughs> yeah, it's always, you know, um, yeah. Um, well, the dynamic is, is that, uh, you know, you're not working, which is, it, he's here at home, he's not at work, so he, he'd like to be at work. We can get through anything together, you know, as long as you have a good, loving support network, whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's, you know, whoever you choose it to be. You just need one person. It doesn't have to be a collective, you know, uh, people. Just one person can, you know, that you rely on, that you trust with your life, can pull you out of anything. <laughs>